Welcome to this YSL tutorial on making Excel talk using Excel VBA. In this fairly short video, we're going to talk about one of Excel's more unusual features, um, the speech feature. And we're going to show you to start with how to use the speak method to make Excel speak a, a, a string of text out loud. We'll give you a bit of information about how you can choose the voice that Excel speaks in, which depends a little bit on which version of Windows you're using and which voice packs you've got installed. Um, to make things slightly more practical, although still having a bit of fun with Excel here, um, we're going to show you how you can get Excel to speak the contents of cells, and we're going to build a little search feature of which Excel will speak the results of rather than display on a message, for instance. And then the final thing we'll do is have a quick look at linking up the speech feature to some of the basic workbook events. So a little bit of fun in this video, let's get started. Let's start by showing you the absolute basics of how to make Excel speak a phrase out loud. I've got a workbook here that does have some sample data in it, this is just a list of the highest grossing films, um, but for the very first example it doesn't matter if you don't have this exact same example at all, we're not going to use any of the data that's in the worksheet. So let's start by heading into the Visual Basic Editor, so if I head to the Developer tab in the ribbon and choose Visual Basic, or of course you can press the Alt and F11 keyboard shortcut, and then you can insert a new module into the project. And then we can start a quick new subroutine called Speak to Me. The speech component of Excel is a member of the application object. So let's start by referencing the application. So I've just pressed Control and Space on the keyboard there to launch the IntelliSense list, and you'll find the application object. And if you enter a full stop, then you can find the speech property of the application. And then finally, what we're interested in here is the speak method. So application.speech.speak followed by a space, and you'll see a list of parameters. The only compulsory one here is the text parameter, which requires a string. And whatever string you enter here, Excel will speak out loud. And yes, that does include rude words, um, but I'm not going to type in any rude words at this point. Um, oh, what's a traditional example? The traditional, traditional example of, of showing messages or speaking messages is always hello world, but I find that so boring. Um, Let's make it say something else. It's my mum's 60th birthday today. I've just been eating some birthday cake at her house. So let's say something like, I like cake, for instance. And then if I wanted to execute that to make Excel speak out loud, all I need to do is run the subroutine. So I can do that either by clicking the green triangle, of course, or pressing the F5 key on the keyboard. And if I do that, I like cake. There you go. Excel likes cake. Now the exact voice that you'll hear when you make Excel speak something it depends very much on which version of Windows you're using, and within different versions of Windows you have different choices of voices. So the default one that I see that I hear here I like cake. is uh, an American chap called David, I believe. So I'm using Windows 10 at the moment. If you wanted to be able to modify which version or which voice you're hearing, then the simplest thing to do is view the control panel. Um, so I'm going to do this from Windows 10 just by right-clicking on the start button in the bottom left-hand corner and then choosing control panel. You may do this in a slightly different way if you're using different versions of Windows. And then inside the control panel, I've just switched my view to view large icons, just so you can see these a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to look at a section here called Speech Recognition. And if I choose that option, I'll get another window appearing. And then on the left-hand side of that window is an option called Text to Speech. And if I click on that, I'll get my list of options for different voices. So from this dialog box, you can select from a list of the voices you have installed on your machine. So as I say, I'm using Windows 10, and by default, I'll get one called Microsoft David and one called Microsoft Zero. Those are the two that are installed by default with American accents. I also have an English language pack installed, which means I get Microsoft Hazel as well. Now, if I were to choose a different option from this drop-down list, it will immediately begin speaking a phrase that's in this text box here, which is quite a long window phrase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly switch to a different voice and then just hit the apply button to make it stop talking. So I'm going to choose Microsoft Zero. You have selected. And when I click apply, it will stop the, uh, the, uh, the voice from speaking. You can actually enter different text in this text box if you want to say, make it say something slightly different. So let me shorten the phrase that it's going to say. And then I can click the preview voice button. You have selected Microsoft Zero and we speaks in a different voice. You can also control the speed of the voice, which is uh, can be quite amusing if you um, ramp up the speed so it speaks incredibly quickly. Um, I'm going to choose Microsoft um, Hazel at this point. You have selected and then hit apply to stop it from, from speaking. And then just to prove that once that's been applied, that it affects what Excel does, I'm going to click, quickly click back into Excel in the background, into the, uh, the VB editor, select my Speak to Me subroutine, and then run it again. I like cake. And there you go. So Excel will speak in a different voice based on which one you've selected from the Speech Properties dialog box. 
One reason I do like having the ability to change the accent and the voice that the Windows uses is because sometimes certain words in certain accents just sound a little bit wrong. So a classic example, if I stick with the English accent just for the moment, and I change the phrase to say, let's just make it say aluminium. Um, let me spell it correctly first as well, aluminium. And then if I make um, Hazel say this, aluminium. Sounds perfectly normal in an English accent. If I change the voice back to David, however, you have selected and then make David say aluminium. Aluminium. It just sounds a little bit wrong to me. So if I wanted David to pronounce it correctly for his accent, aluminium. I could spell aluminium incorrectly to make him pronounce it correctly. Um, you can have a lot of fun with that, so I'm poking fun at my uh, colleagues across the pond there. But um, yeah, you can have a lot of fun with changing the voice and using different accents. Now, it may well be, if you're working in Windows 10, that you don't actually have the Hazel voice installed by default. I didn't have it installed by default, I had to choose to install that. And in Windows 10, that's actually relatively straightforward to do. If I just OK this uh, the Speech Properties dialog box, and then just tap back to the Speech Recognition and close down that window, I can then head to the Start menu and choose to View Settings. So if I do that, there's a section on the Settings dialog box for Time and Language, and if I select Time and Language, there's a, an option on the left-hand side for Region and Language, and then this will list out all the languages that are currently installed on the machine. So, for instance, if I wanted to install the, uh, the English Voice Pack, I could head to the English Language, and then click the Options button there, and then, if I hadn't already installed the Hazel Voice Pack, there would be a Download button in the Speech section, just as there is for the Handwriting and Language Pack section there as well. So you can click the uh, the download button to install that particular voice. If I just head back a step, it's possible to add in new languages as well, of course. So I can click the plus button here and choose from a great big long list of different languages. And I believe that, that some of these, possibly not all, but at least some of them do have a, a language pack installed, a voice pack installed. So it's going to cancel that because I have all the voices installed that I actually want. So let's move on from making Excel just say a constant phrase, like a hello world or whatever, and make it speak the contents of cells. What I'm going to do is I'm going to modify my subroutine. So the first thing that it does is it selects range B2 on my worksheet. Now, it doesn't really matter if you don't have exactly the same set of data as me. All, I'm, all you need to really have in your workbook somewhere is uh, some text and some numbers, perhaps. It's got a list of, of different film names and some, uh, some numbers representing how much they made at the box office and what year they were released in. So my subroutine now is going to select cell B2, and then I'd like it to say Avatar was released in, followed by what year it was released in. Something simple like that. So to do that, back in the Visual Basic Editor, rather than saying application.speech.speak aluminium, I'd like it to say the value of the active cell, so I can say active cell dot value, and then concatenate that with the phrase was released in, and then concatenate that with the value of the cell that's two columns to the right of the active cell. So active cell dot offset zero comma two dot value. And having done that, if I were to simply execute the subroutine at this point, Avatar was released in two thousand and nine. There we go. So it speaks the contents of cells as well as literal text that you can enter into the speak method. We could take this a little bit further now and maybe build a very simple search system which would allow the user to find a film in the list and then have the system speak some information about that film. We've done this sort of thing a couple of times in previous videos. There's a, there's a video on using the find and find next methods in Excel VBA that's part of this series already. So I won't go into quite as much detail in this video, but just to build up something very simple, I'm going to declare a simple variable at the top that says something like film name as string. And then what I'd like to be able to do is ask the user to enter the film that they're trying to search for. So I'm going to say film name equals, and then I'm going to use a basic input box and ask the user to type in a film name. If I could type, type properly, that would help. So type in a film name, or even part of a film name. The find method will find parts of words as well. What I'd then like to do is search for that film in column B of the worksheet and then try to return a reference to a cell which contains the text the user is looking for. So to do that, I'm going to declare another variable, which I'm going to say dim film cell as range. And then after I've asked for the film name, I'm going to try to set film cell equal to, and I can do this in a variety of ways. Let's say range B2, comma range B1, dot end Excel down 
and then I want to try to find and the, the thing that I'm trying to find is film name, whatever the user's typed in. Once this line is executed, one of two things will have happened. Either I will have stored a reference to the first cell in which I found the film name I was looking for, or I haven't found anything at all, in which case the film cell variable will, cont will contain nothing. So I can write a quick if statement here that says if film cell is nothing, then I'll, I'd like to do two different things. I'd like to say, well, let's say application.speech.speak um, could not find, followed by whatever film name I typed in previously. And then I want to make sure I exit the subroutine and then say end if to close off that block if. So, assuming that we have found a cell containing the name of the film I was looking for, what I'd like to do next is concatenate a message that will then be spoken by Excel. So I'm going to declare another variable up at the top. I'm going to say something like dim message text as string. And then after my if statement, I'm going to say message text equals. And then essentially my message text is going to be equal to the phrase that I concatenated earlier. But rather than using active cell, so I'm just going to copy and paste that part of the, the, the statement here. Rather than using active cell, what I want to do instead is use film cell. So I'm going to replace active cell with the words film cell instead. What I can then do, if I remove the range b2.select, that's irrelevant at this point. And then rather than speaking my concatenated message from earlier on, I can replace all of that by making the, uh, the the application speak the sorry speak the message text, not the film cell. Thank you, pardon. There we go. Speak message text. The final thing I'm going to do before I give this one a quick test is display a message box which also displays the same text that Excel will be speaking out loud. So I'm going to say message box, message text. So I'll both see and hear the phrase that we've concatenated. And having done all that, we can simply give the entire thing a quick test. So I should see an input box pop up to begin with. Um, you may remember from previous videos on the find method, by default it will find parts of of, um, of cell content as well. So if I just search for instance for the word star, I can say star and then click OK and I should hear the message spoken out loud first. Star Wars, The Force Awakens was released in 2015. And then finally the message box pops up on the screen as well. And that's a little bit irritating having to wait for the message to to, to end the, the, the spoken part before the, the message box appears on screen. So we're going to make one small modification to our procedure to make sure that we can both hear Excel speaking as well as reading the message at the same time. Back in the VB editor then, and we've got this application.speech.speak message text line. At the end of that line, if I got you to type in a comma at the end, you ought to see the tooltip pop back up with a list of extra parameters. The uh, the one, the second parameter is speak async or speak asynchronously. If we say speak asynchronously, then the speech can begin, but the rest of the subroutine can continue before the speech is finished. So I'm going to set the speak async property or parameter to true. And having done that, let's give this one a quick extra test. If we run it one more time, and I'll search for, let's search for a shorter film name this time. Let's go for Frozen. I haven't seen it, um, but I'm sure some of you have. So if you search for Frozen. Frozen was released in 2013. So you can see that the speech was continuing while the message box was displayed on the screen. So um, basically, if you set the async parameter to true, or speak async parameter to true, it means that the rest of your subroutine can proceed while the uh, the speech is continuing. For me, the best part of this entire system is what happens if you search for text which doesn't exist in the list, particularly if that's sort of nonsensical text. So when we trigger this little if statement to say it could not find what we searched for, if I run the subroutine again and search for something which clearly isn't going to uh, appear in the list, and then click OK, the results are... Could not find query, which is just... <laughs> I think you can have absolutely endless hours of fun listening to Excel struggle to pronounce nonsensical strings of text. Now the speech feature might not be the most useful thing you'll encounter in Excel VBA, but you can have a bit of fun with this. Um, one of the quite cool things you can do is link in the speech feature to events of the workbook and the worksheet. So for instance, let's say you wanted to make Excel say hello to the person who'd opened up your workbook. You can access the workbook's open event, and the simplest way to do that is to just double click 
the this workbook object in the project explorer and then again we've done a video I've made a video on on workbook and worksheet events it's part of the the, uh, the main tutorial series um, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here but to start with I'm going to go to the drop down list at the top left and choose the workbook object which gives me the default event handler for the workbook which happens to be the one that I want the workbooks open event and I've got access to a whole host of other events on the right hand side here in this drop down list but open as I say is the one that I want and all I'm going to make happen is that when the workbook opens I'm going to make the application um, speech component speak and it's going to say hello sorry spell hello properly and then concatenate that with the name of the person who's opened up the workbook now you'll get your mileage may vary from this um, this little technique the environ function is the one that I'm going to use here now environment is short for uh, environment and that refers to the uh, the Windows environment variables and um, one of the environment variables is the username of the person running the code. So this is the username as they will log into Windows. Now mine's fairly um, descriptive, it's Andrew Gould. Um, you may find that your usernames in large organizations particularly are just code numbers. So this might not be particularly useful um, in, in those situations. But just as a quick demonstration, if I've added that simple line of code to the workbooks open event, I can save my procedure and I can just close down the, um, the Visual Basic Editor and I can close down Excel or close down this workbook at least. And then whenever I open this workbook back up again, as long as my macros are enabled, which they are, Hello, Andrew. Gould. it will speak out loud automatically when the workbook opens. Um, so you can have a bit of fun with, with speech. This wasn't designed to be the most useful thing you'll ever encounter in Excel VBA. But hopefully that's something fun and silly for a Sunday afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, see you for the next video. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.